What's going on everybody? This is Sean of Ross Like Music. Today I want to talk about this record right here. This is Leon Vinehall's Nothing Is Still released on Ninja Tune Records. Now going into this record I had pretty high expectations. The three tracks that I had heard uh, before this album was released, Movements, Envelopes, and uh, English Oak. There we go. Those tracks had already started to lead me to believe that this was going to be, if not one of my favorite albums of the year, very possibly was going to end up being my favorite album this year. So I also usually tend to wait a little bit on my reviews so I get the chance to try to digest an album as much as possible. This has been the first record in a very long time that as soon as I'm finished listening to it, I am hitting replay and listening to the album, uh, listening to it over again. I, oh, this album is my favorite record of 2018. And not only 2018, this might end up being one of my all time favorite records. I, I cannot recommend this album enough. It, it's just, it's an absolute masterpiece of a record. And I definitely want to gush and give you an idea as to why I think it's just so goddamn good. But man, oh man, this blew my expectations completely out of the water. And I want to tell you why I think that this might just be one of the best records made since the turn of the decade. So with that little bit of hyperbole, out of the way, yeah, let's get into this guy. So a little bit of background about uh, Leon Vinehall, if you're unfamiliar with him. For the longest time, I knew him as a UK house slash bass music producer. And one of the first records that put him on my radar is this 12 inch right here. I don't know if that's gonna focus or not, but this is his Oss record, uh, only 12, the only 12 inch I think he's put out on this label and the tracks are Brother and Sister. And there was just a very distinctive quality to the tracks on here that reminded me a lot, honestly, of Floating Points where the tracks on here are still fairly dance floor friendly, but are so detailed and so cleverly made that they're also fun to listen to. And also just recently, I picked up his EP, uh, Music for the Uninvited, which was released on 3024 Records, which was uh, Martin's label. I don't know if he's still making music or not, or releasing music on his own label or not. And this is also a record that I'm really looking forward to diving into because I really want to compare it to uh, this record and see if they are as divergent and as different as I think they might be. But since hearing Brother, Sister, and then the uh, the other EP that he put out two years ago that I never picked up, and now I'm really sorry that I never did, uh, Leon Vinehall has always been an artist whose name has been on, uh, always been in the back of my mind. So when I found out that he was putting out his debut album, apparently this is an EP, and it was coming out on Ninja Tune of all labels, I got really, really excited. And then the first track that I heard off this record was Movements, which had a lot of the qualities that I generally enjoy in music. It was a little bit somber, it was a little bit sophisticated, it had uh, some elements of electronic music, but it also had some elements of, uh, it also had some live instrumentation mixed into it. And overall, it really felt like a small piece of, of a bigger picture that had yet to be revealed. And then over time, I heard uh, Envelopes, which was probably the, it, which is probably actually the most straightforward track on here because of its uh, jazzy groove, uh, beautiful use of strings, 
and it really feels like the track fit right at home on Ninja Tune because they've always been doing that sort of soundtrack to the unmade movie sort of uh, cinematic style of music. See Amon Tobin for that kind of stuff. And it just had this nice slow crawl to it that could, in the lesser hands of a, uh, a lesser producer, be really just sort of sluggish and boring, but there's just this so slow, subtle creep and drama to the track that just makes it so much fun to listen to. But the track that honestly sent me over the edge for this album was English Oak, where it, it starts off on this beautiful ambient buildup with some really stuttering, really interesting creative electronics and has this beautiful violin and synth swell and then launches into what is probably the most club friendly track on here. And it, it, it worked so effectively. And quite honestly, I would actually be really happy if uh, someone did an edit of that track because I love the way uh, it, he really nails the, the sort of tunnel-y atmosphere that I uh, associate with some of the best techno. Now that's only three tracks from a 10 track album. How does the rest of the album fare? From the get-go, the, the first track just instantly grabbed me. Uh, From the Sea and It Looms has this beautiful ambient creep to it that's emotionally gripping. And, and actually this is sort of a character a characteristic that is true and through the entire album. It's emotionally gripping and it definitely has a bit of a melancholy, somber tone throughout the entire album, but it never feels oppressive. It never feels like it, it's so overwrought and it, it feels like you're just made to feel depressed while listening to it. Now, it definitely has a bit of a sad, like, like I said, melancholy tone to it, but it, it never feels so sad that it, it detracts from making me want to listen to it. And there, there's been some albums uh, recently that I've had that issue with where it's just so oppressively sad that, and depressing that I, I, I can only listen to it in certain moods. That has not been the case with this. And I think a large part of that has to do with all of the tracks, and especially the first track does this so perfectly, all the tracks, even if they don't have a, a strong beat to them, there is a strong sense of musical movement to them. There's a certain flow and build up to a musical climax that makes all of these tracks both great for background uh, space out music, but also make them extremely engaging to listen to. The way that the synths build to this just beautiful swell and then all of the elements, the electronics and the strings all come back together. It's so masterfully done. And the rest of the album is just filled with moments with it. There are some elements, uh, times on the album where it's a little bit quieter. The album definitely finishes on a much uh, more subdued tone than some of the rest of the tracks on here. But for the most part, even when the record is as chilled out as could possibly be, it is never not interesting to listen to. And another thing that amazes me about this record is, despite the fact that it feels like it's meant to be listened to as a whole, there's so many standout moments on it. Like I said, Movements is a great little mix of electronics, house and techno, and ambient music, and it's just got a nice flow to it. English Oak 
again, is a, a track that I cannot get enough of. And also, uh, what, what was the other one on here? Envelopes is just this gorgeous, jazzy, cinematic, almost trip hoppy track. I love those, those three tracks alone make this record for me. But it has so many other moments throughout it. I love the ambience of tracks like the, the two footnote interlude uh, tracks, Birds on the Tarmac and Julia. Drinking it in flows so perfectly after those tracks and is also just a nice little ambient piece. Probably the fourth biggest highlight track on here is the most aggressive, most bass heavy track on here, and that's Trouble Parts 1, 2, and 3. I absolutely love this track. And despite the fact that it comes in with one of the harshest kick drum drops I've heard on an, an album like this in a while, it plays with your expectations the way that it builds up to the drop, but it never launches into club territory. It is strictly a cinematic mood piece and it is one of the most aggressive, borderline horror movie-esque pieces. Uh, it, it, and it's effectiveness that I've heard in a long time. And I, I'm sure the more that I listen to this record, I will find uh, other tracks that stand out to me. I know the la uh, Ice Cream was off the top of my head another track that I really, really like. And I love the way that the album sort of finishes on an anticlimactic note. There is not a dull, wasted moment on this entire record. It's literally just got everything that I look for. It's emotionally powerful, it's impactful, it's engaging. It really blew all of my expectations expectations out of the out of the water. I honestly expected this to be more of a background, uh, an exceptional background music listen. And what I got is hands down the most engaging record that I've listened to this year. And I cannot praise this album enough. I will state though that I do not think that this record is for everyone. But I don't know, I, I don't know what else to say about this record. I cannot lap enough praise onto it. Hands down, right now, Leon Vinehall, Nothing Is Still, my favorite record of 2018. So that's gonna be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've given this record a listen. Definitely let me know what you thought of it down in the comments. As always, head over to my WordPress and Steemit blogs because that's where I will have the audio link so you can check this record out for yourself. And I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, peace out!